Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome to Mars Horizon. This is a relatively new space agency management game that released last month where you build your own space agency, launch rockets, train crews, and eventually try to set up a manned mission on Mars. It's actually looking pretty darn cool and getting some very good reception, so I thought we would give it a shot today. Let's go ahead and start up a new game and see how well we will fare. Now, we have five different options as far as space agencies we can play with. The European Space Space Agency, America, the Soviet Union, which will later become Russia, China, and Japan. I believe this game actually was made in collaboration with the European Space Agency, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go for Japan, because no one ever seems to talk about the Japanese space program, but I think that could be kind of fun. And as far as difficulty and a few other features, I'm just going to leave this on the medium difficulty. You can customize it a bit more, but I'm going to leave it as is, because I don't know enough about the game to try tweaking with it. And here we are. Welcome, Director. For the first time in humanity's history, space is within reach. You're your role is to take us there. Through technological innovation and cutting-edge research, our agency will meet the formidable challenges of space travel. Through endeavor and bravery, we will inspire our nation to look to the stars for its future. Oh, cool. It actually got some Japanese in there as well. Sweet. All right. So there is a pretty good tutorial in this game, and the UI is actually really intuitive. So if you're brand new to this game, I highly recommend you follow that tutorial down to the letter. It's really quite good. To start off, the tutorial is trying to tell me that there are several important milestones we will need to complete if we want to grow and expand our space program. In fact, the year is only 1957, so we're very early on in human space exploration and space travel. So we're actually kind of just now getting our feet under us, and and we need to get the very basics down. Launching a basic rocket or a satellite or sending an animal into space. These are the major accomplishments we need before we can even continue with our space program. In fact, to keep things interesting, the game does have a competition between the five different space agencies. The first who can accomplish each of these individual milestones gets some extra rewards in the form of accolades and bragging rights, as well as more science, which you can use to continue upgrading your rockets, which gives you a good edge over your opponents for the future and approval, and high approval can result in a larger budget. So, always good to compete and try to be the first to accomplish something truly amazing. For our first mission, we don't have any sort of a payload because we're not trying to launch any sort of satellite. So we're going to go for a basic test launch and design a vehicle. Now, designing a vehicle is actually very simple in this game. Again, if you are the kind of person who likes Kerbal Space Program, but it's very intimidating, you don't have to worry about that quite so much in this game. There's only two real stages you have to worry about, and that's going to be the upper stage and and the booster. The upper stage carries whatever payloads you have, in this case none, but in the future there will be one, and has to be strong enough to carry whatever that mass is of a chosen payload. And then the booster has to be strong enough to take care of both the payload and the upper stage and get it into the lower atmosphere. So we're going to go ahead and build a basic Nigiru rocket, which is going to cost me 80,000 of whatever the currency is in this game. And there's also going to be some sort of a trait based on how well our constructors are able to build the rocket. In order to launch the rocket, though, we actually will need a launch pad, and that hasn't been researched yet, so let's go to the research tree. Up here in the top left, you can see we have research corresponding to missions, buildings, and vehicles. And these trees are fairly extensive as you progress down the different eras of human exploration and colonization. To start off, we need to research a small launch pad, so that's going to take up about 100 science. And we are generating 120 per month, so we should be able to get this as of next month. How do you advance to the next month? Well, you just click the little button right down here that says next month. This is a turn-based game. So now we've researched a small launch pad, and I'm going to have to build the thing. We're going to click on the little base button right down here, and there is our space agency in Japan. You can see we have a limited amount of space to work with, but let's go ahead and go to the build menu and build a small launch pad for 50,000 of our currency. And there is actually an adjacency bonus with other buildings. So in this case, you can see that the launch pad would benefit from being next to the hangar, which makes sense, but we would have a detriment if it was placed next to the HQ because people don't want to be working right next to an extremely loud rocket. So I do want to place this right next to the hangar. The only problem is I'd like to place it kind of far away from the uh, HQ, but you can see that if we place it down here, at the very bottom, it increases the cost of building if you have to tear out some of the nearby terrain. So I think this is probably going to end up being my best option. We'll place it right there, and it's going to take one or maybe two months to go ahead and build. We also should go ahead and continue working on research. I know my next major mission is going to be an artificial satellite, so let's go ahead and start working on this preemptively in preparation for the next big milestone. 
Now our rocket is done and ready to be launched. It actually did get an event with some extra launch reliability, which is nice, so it's less likely to fail. Now you might be looking at this reliability and thinking that's pretty terrible, and it is. There's a very definite chance that your rockets are going to have some sort of a failure, sometimes catastrophic, and it's going to explode. But the good news is, with every launch, whether it is a success or a failure, you will learn from the experience, and the next time you launch that type of rocket, it will be more likely to succeed. Let's go ahead and move on to our launch preparations. This is where we would be setting up a crew uh, if we had a manned mission, but we don't, so we are going to go ahead and set up a launch date. Now, for our launch date, you can see there are several different windows where we can launch our rocket, some of which are suboptimal or even impossible to work with, like September. In this case, though, I don't think there's any reason not to go ahead and launch immediately in April. It is an optimal launch date. Let's go ahead and try that one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a green light. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch the mission. Now, weather does play a role in this game. If you have really bad uh, conditions for launching, like this rain right here, it might actually be worth delaying an attempt to get more favorable conditions. In this case, we got some really bad luck with the rain, and you can see there's a 61% chance we're going to get some sort of negative event, a 21% chance of a critical failure. We're going to go ahead and reschedule the launch. Much as it sucks to do that, I don't think it is worth taking the risk. That's just way too high. So let's launch in May instead. Let's try that one again. We can also see the progress of the other nations, and we can see that the United States and Europe are a fair bit behind us, so we're definitely the early uh, arrivers to this milestone. Okay, the conditions aren't fantastic, but they are adequate. 54% chance of failure. I think we're going to go ahead and have to work with that, though. As long as it doesn't explode, I think we'll make progress on the milestone. There's going to be a cinematic every time you launch something into space, and that's partly because the game's trying to build up dramatic tension. And understandably so. There's good reason for dramatic tension. If the rocket explodes, well, you're going to feel really bad, aren't you? Well, it looks like we were able to get up into the atmosphere without exploding, so that's good. Did we get a negative event? Uh, yes, we did. Okay. We lose some science from our mission reward because there was a systems damage, and that sucks. But on the plus side, we did accomplish the milestone. And you can see here, for launching the rocket once, we do get 15% more reliability. So if we want to launch this again, we're more likely to succeed. There's our approval and our science for a month as a reward. Awesome. And now let's take a look at our next milestone. So the artificial satellites. Now this is currently locked because we don't have all the research that is required for an artificial satellite. We need to unlock, it looks like, payload research first. So, let's go to our research screen. We've already unlocked the mission for artificial satellite, but now I'm going to start working on that payload. So now that the research is done, we can plan out our next mission. Fun thing to note, by the way, on top of milestones, there's also special requests like this right here. Now, this is a way of getting some extra um, money, approval, science, etc. Good things can come out of this. Uh, depending on what you want to accomplish. In this case, it looks like they want us to launch one more sounding rocket with a camera equipped so that we can capture the curvature of the Earth. I might come back to that one for right now. Let's move on with the more important stuff because don't forget, I'm racing the other nations of the world. So let's go ahead and select our payload. Now the payload here is the Osumi right here. And this is going to launch a special satellite into space. We could change up some of the configurations of this satellite, which you can see will give different advantages or disadvantages. Comms, for example, has better rating, but it reduces the reliability. It's also heavier. Uh, some of these are cheaper than others. Some are more expensive. I don't know. For now, I think we're just going to go with a standard satellite because you can't really go wrong for tutorial if you go with standard, right? We have to build this, though, just like the rocket, and this is going to take a couple months. Okay, the payload is built and ready to go. We can see that we did have some events here. Cheaper build time or faster build time, but it does cost more. Well, that's not great, but all right. We'll go ahead and design a vehicle to now accommodate for that payload. Now, this is where things will get a little bit more complicated than before. We have to design a new vehicle. Just like before, we have to only worry about the upper stage and the booster, but the requirements are going to be very different. Let's click on the upper stage. And over here, you can see we have several different upper stages that we can work with. Each of these have different characteristics. They cost different amounts, they weigh different amounts, they have different payload capacity, and so on. In this case, my payload only weighs 25 kilograms, so a simple Lambda uh, 4S will be sufficient. We don't need anything higher than this. And you can actually plan out your rockets using technology you haven't researched yet, so you'll know exactly what to gun for if you're desperate to get a particular rocket type. In this case, though, the Lambda will do 
just fine. We need to do the exact same thing for the booster. And once again, the Lambda 4S booster will do just fine. You can see that it has the boost of 350 kilograms, which is exactly what I need. This is going to take one month to build, and it's going to cost me 125k. Yikes. I'm going to go ahead and start researching a research lab to construct, which uh, will be nice because it can increase the amount of science you get from every successful mission. So I'm going to go ahead and start researching that now since we're already waiting for the next big launch. Uh, the rocket should be done right about now, just like so. And in this case, the engineers have absolutely no notable issues, which is good and bad. Nothing negative, but nothing positive either. Let's go ahead and move on to our launch preparations. Now, again, this is an unmanned mission, so we don't have to worry about a crew. Let's set a launch date. October we could work with, but we would lose out on 20% launch reliability. Instead, I'm going to move to November. So we're going to wait one month for the most likely success. Oh, China failed a test launch. I saw that. You can't hide that from me, China. <laughs> Live in your shame. The research lab is done. Okay, can we build one of these things out? Let's see. How long will it take to build? It'll take three months. Ah. I don't suspect that our, we'll be able to take advantage of the extra science from this particular mission, but everything after that will be good. Just like before, there are adjacency bonuses to enjoy. In this case, I would have loved to place it right along here. Don't think I can, though. Can we rotate it? Yes, by clicking X, you can indeed rotate. And this way, I get a double adjacency bonus with the hangar and the HQ. So we'll place you right there. And once again, if we do succeed in this, this will be the first past the goalpost. Here's hoping we don't fail. Let's launch. It's a little dark, don't you think? Eh, okay, probably fine. Is this at least adequate conditions? It is, so only minus 3%. Good chance of success, only a 1 in 10 chance of it exploding, which would obviously suck. So, let's go ahead and launch the rocket. Oh, here we go. Please don't blow up, please don't blow up, please don't blow up. You're gonna be crossing your fingers every time. <laughs> please don't blow up. Japan needs this. It's so good for national morale. Hey, what do you know? We succeeded. All right, do we have at least a successful launch? No benefits, but at least nothing negative came out of it either. And we are the first in the world to launch a satellite into space. Now we have to actually manage the satellite, and satellites and space stations can give you different resources. In this case, comms and data, both of which make a lot of sense for a satellite. So, we need to try and get as much of this as possible using up the power of our satellite. Now to start off, it looks like we only are able to get um, a couple of basic commands like signal return test and visual data collection to get a little bit of comms. You can see that this would be enough to get us at least one comms, which we can then spend with some power in order to gain a lot more data. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's gonna take up one turn. Let's confirm the command. And it looks like we did succeed, so that's good. If we had a critical success, we get some bonus resources. We didn't, though, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and then spend some of that data to go for a data transmission right along here. Ooh, but we did get a catastrophic failure this time around, a camera shutter fail. All right, so we didn't get quite as much data as before. That sucks. But still, we should be able to at least recharge the power a little bit and then spend some more of that data in order to get a lot more comms. That will get me to my bonus reward down over here. And everyone's thrilled because we succeeded in our mission. Hooray, we accomplished our first milestone. Yeah! Or a second milestone, I've already forgotten how this works. Suck it, NASA, suck it, Europe. I got a satellite first. We can't move on to animals in space quite yet, though I am already researching that. So while we wait, let's go ahead and fulfill a request mission and try to get some extra approval and some science to improve my budget. Just a simple sounding rocket, doesn't have to be anything fancy. There are some special events for the game, in this case, fears over an artificial satellite. Oh gosh, people are freaking out about the payload and the Soviet Union's accusing me of things. <laughs> That's great, okay, wonderful. Well, we could agree with that and we would uh, probably improve my reputation with the Soviet Union though they would get science out of the result. Uh, if we're trying to be super duper competitive, we probably don't want to give that to them. That said, the Soviets, as far as I was seeing, uh, they were pretty far behind everybody else, so I don't think it's really going to hurt me to do this. And having better reputation is probably worthwhile, so we will give that one a go. And that is one year complete in the game. We're going to have our budget reviewed, and we gained a load of approval since the last budget review, and as a result, I'm going to get a lot of extra money per month. 
Now, because we finished building a research lab, we actually do have mission training unlocked, which can improve the performance of a particular mission. In this case, we can go for the science training because of the research lab, and the more time we spend on that, the more uh, profitability we will gain out of that. That said, I think I am still going to go for a February launch. We're only going to get 5%. If, however, I waited until, let's say, June, we could get up to a maximum of 25% extra science. But I don't think it's worth losing three good launch months. We're going to go ahead and launch in February so we can work on a totally different project and hopefully launch in June. Now, let's see. I would like to move toward getting the animals in space. We have the basic payload technology research, but we do have some suggested parts, and there are actually quite a few of them that we might want to consider researching before we attempt to launch it. Guess it kind of depends on the payload, um, like weight and such. 500 kilograms, yeah, what I currently have researched absolutely is not going to work. So the Jupiter would be one option, but 1200 kilogram capacity seems excessive. Could instead go for the Algol over there, the Jupiter would probably be the bare minimum, or the Scout. Yeah, oh, really good reliability over here versus a bit more mass. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different options as far as what we can go for here. Hmm, okay. Well, we don't have to research all of them. We just got to figure out which of the two we want and go from there. Jupiter research is done. Let's go for the booster. And there it is. Okay, just in time for the payload to be done. Perfect, okay. And actually got some extra payload reliability. Well, ain't that nice. So let's go ahead and design up the vehicle. And in this case, I think we were saying we wanted to go for the Jupiter right along here. So we're going to select this part. And for the booster, we wanted to get... Uh, apparently, this doesn't work. Oh, why not? Oh, the lift capacity isn't high enough. I misread that. Okay, so the mass of our Jupiter is too heavy. And as a result, we can't use this. Ah, darn it. All right, well, I messed that up. We have to... Uh, we have to research another part. All right, so let's try that again. We're going to go for the Jupiter part there and the Jupiter booster. Guess that makes sense. You know, he's probably supposed to match Jupiter with Jupiter, and that'll be the uh, obvious choice there. But all right. So this will work the Shubu uh, rocket. I said that completely wrong. It's going to cost me a fair bit. Six months to build. Ouch, dude. All right, let's just go ahead and work on that. In the meantime, what else do we want to research? probably should go ahead and start working toward mission control so we will be able to have other training options to improve our uh, success chance let's see do we want to place down a rocket test pad that would allow me to get some extra training in if we place it down over here for example that seems kind of okay it's a little expensive but I'm okay with that in order to just have some other mission options that make it more likely for us to succeed with better reliability. So we're going to try for that. And we're already working toward our next budget review. Didn't gain quite as much support this time, but it hasn't gone down, so that's got to be pretty good. It looks like Russia may have just launched something. And there's our rocket. Okay, no negative events. That'll have to be good enough for now. Do we want to go for some training? I mean, we could for the reliability just to improve the odds of success, or we can go for a bit, a bit of extra science. I'm thinking probably the science in this case. This seems reliable enough that I'm not too worried about it. And we could delay, or do we want to go ahead and just launch immediately in February? I think so, because uh, then I can free up a mission slot to work on some other requests while I continue doing other research. So yeah, 5%, I think that will have to be good enough. It is already an optimal date. Fine, let's go ahead and launch an animal into space. All right, it's pretty likely to succeed. Let's see what the weather's looking like. It's not raining, so that's something good. Very likely to succeed in this. Excellent. All right, so let's go ahead and launch. See what Fido's going to do in space. Okay, we have a successful ignition. That's probably good. Don't blow up. Don't you dare blow up. Don't you dare blow up. You get into space, Fido. I'm not going to lose another one. Or, wait, no, I didn't lose any. Never mind. All right, I think we actually did succeed. You can click at any point, by the way, if you want to skip some of those cinematics. That's completely fine. Ah, we didn't get an extra positive event, but at least we were successful and we met our milestone before anyone else. Now, with an animal in space, we have to play the little mini game once again to try and get a bit more of the data and the comms. The goal is to get two and six for an extra bonus. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and do some of the basics, I guess, to start. I actually could use the atmospheric sampling and our power to try and get extra comms, which I can use to spend for extra data transmission. Makes sense to me. Ooh, we got a perfect focus this time, which actually got me some extra data. Beautiful, and that was all it took. 
in order to get our optimal results. Hooray! Wow, that is a lot of extra science for the next two months. Holy crap, <laughs> that's a huge improvement. Yeah, dude. Okay, we have unlocked mission control. Now that's gonna be helpful. So mission control is gonna allow me to run two missions simultaneously instead of only one. So let's make sure we place one of these things down. Uh, let's see. There are some adjacency bonuses with the HQ and with the research lab. So placing it down over here would have been ideal. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too expensive for me to pull that off. Darn it. We should always be looking toward the next mission. So satellite imagery, uh, observation satellites, that'll be fun. And there's a bunch of different recommended parts. Okay, so we want pretty much any of these, huh? All right. There is an international geophysical year. Oh, an initiative to get more data on Earth in three years time. If we can complete a satellite imaging mission within three years, which I'm actually currently researching, then we would get a load of extra money immediately upon completion and another 750 if successful. I accept, this seems great. Thank you for loads of cash. Let's see, an open skies debate, a global symposium taking place to establish laws regarding the territorial space for orbiting satellites. Free access, huh? Advisors believe supporting will improve diplomatic relations, though opposing it may prove unpopular. I guess I'm gonna go for the uh, extra reputation with other agencies. Now, diplomacy down over here, we can see exactly what is involved in that as far as who likes us and who's antagonistic. As Japan, we don't really have any particular friends, whereas let's say the US and Europe would have been friends, and I'm pretty sure Russia and China are friends. So we're actually kind of in a weird position where we're a little bit isolated diplomatically, but that's one more reason why I would like to try and improve this. If we can get allied agencies, we get a boost to science. Also, friendly agencies provide a greater contribution toward joint missions, which we may have in the future. Okay, we finished with our mission control, which means not only can I continue working on launching this extra sounding rocket, but we can now move towards something like orbital chimpanzees. Lucrative. Advisors have flagged this to be an extremely beneficial mission. Wow, that is a lot of money. Yeah, okay, we can go ahead and plan that mission. Let's start constructing another one of these Edens. While we work on sending that chimpanzee into space, let's see if we can indeed move towards satellite imaging. By the way, notice up here that there are special challenges for milestone missions. In the next 161 months, we need to finish three of them, and then we will get some research cost pen uh, reduction, which is nice. I'm pretty confident we are going to be able to accomplish three in the next 161 months. Good lord. Since we actually are doing pretty well on money, I think something I'm gonna go ahead and do is build a slightly better observation satellite. It costs more to build, but it does give us a little bit of extra power to work with, which means we have more mission opportunities uh, once we're in space to try and guarantee we succeed in the minigame. So let's just try that one and see how it goes. I'm also gonna go ahead and start researching an expansion for my research lab. Now this does cost a little bit of money in upkeep, but we would get an extra 50 science per month. Now, considering a lot of the missions we're doing get us a lot of extra science that may seem insignificant, but considering technically we're only generating 120 per month, this would be a pretty big boost, and the more research we have, the more stuff I can unlock for better options with more rockets. So I have to think lots of science is a good thing. We're gonna try for that. Now, this is kind of fun. We actually do have something new unlocked for our boosters. In this case, I did place down a Delta upper uh, stage, and down here in boosters, you can see we have options for supplementary boosters. So if you wanted to toss on a little bit of extra stuff, we could improve, let's say, the reliability by a pretty good amount. Now, in this case, I think 80% is still pretty good, and I don't have the research done, so no, but still, let's try for this. Wait a minute, what do you mean I don't have a launch pad? <gasps> I need to get the medium launch pad. No. Let's go ahead and swap over our research for that then. Now, the good news is swapping research, you don't lose progress, so it's okay to pause on this while we work on something more important. Let's take a look at my budget review. Oh, we did get up to tier four. All right, so we got a little bit of extra money per month. Nice. Looks like our chimpanzee is ready to launch into space. Eh, I'm sure it's gonna be completely fine. Oh, it's raining. Uh, okay. Not as likely to succeed, but still good enough that I'm willing to take the risk. Launch the chimp! No problem at all. In fact, if anything, we did really well. Sweet. So I get some increased capacity for more command on the first turn of the first task. What does that mean? I'm pretty sure that has to do with the satellite interaction in space. And we did succeed in getting our bonus objectives, despite the fact that we actually had two critical failures that time around. But there we go, I even got an achievement. Never had a doubt in my mind. Oh dear, but it looks like NASA actually went straight for lunar orbit. Oh, okay. 
Well, congratulations to NASA. Hopefully they like me a bit. Oh, I lost some support for not being super nationalistic. Well, sue me. All right, we finished with a satellite imagery uh, rocket. The only problem is we don't have a medium launch pad. So what I guess I can do is set up some science training, and it's going to be a while before I can do anything with this. If only we had the launch pad ready to go. We could actually enjoy a load of extra science. Dang, all right. Well, now the launch pad is finally researched. Okay, let's resume with the research lab so I can get science a little bit faster, since obviously that slowed me down quite a bit. Launch pad, take the launch of medium-sized rockets. Okay, so placing it down over here probably still makes some sense. So we're gonna try for this. And that's gonna take another six months to build. Ouch, I should have paid a lot more attention to the requirements of an upcoming mission. We could have actually been ready for this. The research lab is ready to be expanded. Let's go ahead and add that on. Unfortunately, once again, it's a little on the expensive side, but we're gonna go ahead and work with that. Let's place it right there. And the medium launch pad is finally done. Okay, and we also finished our expansion. So now we have a more reasonable amount of science coming in. And for our satellite imagery, we can finally get ready to launch that. We will launch in May. So we're actually gonna launch two rockets in May. That'll be nice, but we should get a load of science as a result. Which will be good for a catch-up mechanic, because apparently I am falling behind in a few areas. Alright, we're ready for some satellite imagery. We will be the first to do that, while everyone else went to the moon. Also, we're apparently doing this at the same time. Wait, am I launching two rockets literally at the same time? Because we apparently have to hit launch mission twice. And it kind of jumped between programs. That's confusing. Oh wow, this is a much bigger rocket. I like it. Adequate conditions, 84% chance. Seems pretty good, let's launch. Ooh, big rocket. Me likey. Okay, nothing too crazy out of that, but we were successful, which means I completed a milestone before anyone else. So I lost the moon, but I started taking pictures of everyone in their backyards. Oh, and there's actually a uh, third different resource to work with now. Well, I guess I'm glad that I got the extra power, huh? And we were successful. Look at that. Beautiful. Thank you. Huzzah! We got the geophysical data, which means I get a load of money, and I got some more support out of the arrangement, too. Nice. Now, we did just finish researching an astronaut training facility, and as a result, we have crew options down over here. But first, I have to build the training facility in order to hire astronauts. Let's go ahead and plan out our mission for space. And again, it looks like China's actually going to beat me on this one. All right. Well, three months to build up a Mercury, probably another few months to build up a rocket. Yeah, we're probably not going to be able to beat them. So if that's the case, I'm going to go for improved communications modules. Nah, I think I'll just stick with what I've got right now. This should be fine. Let's go ahead and build this out. We've also just unlocked multi-band crew operations, which means we can go for extra planets. So, well, wait, no, it's taking me to somewhere else. Hang on, let me deal with this first. There we go. Okay, so if we take a look at the solar system, we should be able to find several different places to go. There's Mars right along there. Okay, and Venus and Mercury. Sweet, we're finding different places we can launch. And the astronaut training facility is done. Cool. Now, each of these astronauts are going to have different traits associated with them. In this case, Fujimoto has extra science reward. We have electricians with extra power for tasks and uh, faster recovery time so we can send this astronaut on multiple missions. I'm going to go ahead and grab Fujimoto because I think that's probably useful. It does cost a lot of money to hire and there is a salary associated. So every time we're picking up new astronauts, we are reducing how much money we can make. Okay, we're going to be launching our own human in space here. This means now we do need to have an astronaut. Fujimoto, you shall be my guinea pig. I mean, scientist. All right, our first human in space. This is a little bit riskier, but I think it's going to be worth it. Big honking Delta rocket. Good conditions. Highly likely we will succeed. And of course we did. Excellent. Not that I had any doubt. All was going to be well. Oh, we were so close to a super optional, optimal result. Darn. Ah, well. So we only barely lost the race to get a person in space. Dang. Now, once you have a crew, you have an extra resource that you can use to gain additional, well, other resources. I think you can only use people like once per round, shown up over here, but they do regenerate at the end of a turn. So it probably is worth uh, making use of them every single time. I don't, I don't see any reason not to. And of course, we are going to be successful in our manned mission. And now he's going to descend right on back down to Earth. I hope those parachutes... Yeah, okay. I don't know if there's a chance that maybe the parachutes don't deploy, in which case your astronaut dies. 
Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if that's a thing in the game. And we were the second to launch a human into space. We have now accomplished three of our milestones. We are going to get a lot of extra approval and science for the next few months for doing so stinking well. And Fujimoto now has to recuperate for six months, but that's fine. By the time that he's done, we'll have built another rocket. In the meantime, though, I think that's actually a good place for us to be ending this video. So if you guys would like to see more of this in the future, do let me know in the comment section down below. In the meantime, though, I think it's a pretty fun little game. Very zen, very chill, not necessarily that difficult, but if you're going to be trying to optimize and win the first milestone in absolutely everything, well then yeah, there's definitely going to be an element of strategy and a lot of luck involved, but it's pretty cool, and I can imagine getting further and further down the research all the way to having crude um, uh, Mars landings and such, that would be pretty fun to get to. So again, if you guys want to see more, let me know by showing your support in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.